Hello and welcome to the first pre-recorded Residence Forum. COVID-19 has changed many things over the last few weeks and this is no different. This was recorded on March the 27th in the morning and I'm fully aware that some of what I'm about to say is probably already out of date. At the last Residence Forum I was asked about a post box. I have been working really hard to get that actioned. I submitted the application a few weeks ago. I have heard, since heard back this week that that has been declined. I'm working quite hard on how we can move forward with this. Um, according to the post office, we don't need one because there is one um, in Alconbury Village. So um, obviously that's not a sustainable point of view. So I'm working hard to see what else we can do. Maybe go with a parcel um, box rather than a post box. I've also been having quite a lot of discussions um, with Northdow about their foodie group. Um, Pig Casso, who were going to come on site this week and until obviously they couldn't um, due to Corona, are very keen to come on site and bring their food trucks. There are several of them who have banded together um, and bring their food trucks to Northstow and they're quite keen to come to us. So if that's something that you would like to be involved in, please let me know. Hi, so really sorry again that we can't be holding the forum in person um, and I know it's going to be a bit harder to uh, get the good interaction that we be able to at previous events um, without being able to see you all um, and have uh, the Q&A that we normally have. What we'll do is we'll just talk through um, again some slides, um, the way the development's rolling out um, and some of the things that are planned over the next um, 12 to 18 months and just update you on a few things. So hopefully that will work to some effect and then at the end we can just have a talk uh, and get some feedback as to the best way of doing some of these forums um, over the next few weeks if, uh, if the current conditions continue. I hope the, the following slides help. So apologies for starting off with a bit of a busy slide, um, but this is very much um, hopefully makes sense to people around maps and plans uh, of what we've already delivered uh, and also what's coming next. So. The list to the side of the plan uh, relate to buildings and amenities that have already been delivered, uh, which should be relatively familiar to, to many of you. So uh, just first looking at the Enterprise Zone, we've obviously got the club and incubator buildings, as well as the headquarters buildings for ICO, for MMUK and John Adams. And then more on the um, residential and amenity side, obviously most people who know the school um, in the bottom uh, corner there, uh, and also the cricket pitch uh, and the community park and the watch office. Just give you a moment to take those aspects in uh, and then the list at the bottom relate to those that we've spoken about before that are in delivery or in planning uh, and should be coming soon. So it's going to be quite a busy next 18 months uh, delivery of both the Glade and the County Council Headquarters building and also getting everything ready for the delivery uh, of the secondary school and, and further housing. So we'll just quickly go on now to the next slide to look at um, the next aspects of housing and then we'll go into that sort of delivery pipeline of buildings um, one by one. So hopefully from this map you'll be able to see whereabouts uh, you you live in relation to the the key phase one uh, and obviously we've got Hopkins um, first area Morris Homes and Redrow all um, working away um, and then um, as you come towards uh, the boulevard and the cricket pitch and um, there's obviously work going on on Hopkins second parcel of land and also Crest Nicholson of course I say work is going on very conscious that pretty much all of the house builders uh, on site will have finished work um, today and be closing down the sites. Um, within that we've also got Civic Living and at the uh, just at the south end of the boulevard um, our next um, parcel of land coming forward will be uh, adjacent to the Civic Living area, be Campbell Buchanan. So probably a new name for, for those of you from the last forum. Uh, and then this map also shows uh, how we're taking forward the next parcels. So we've got a couple of parcels um, with which are exchanged or under offer with house builders and then uh, parcels uh, 6A, 9 and 10 are part of the infrastructure work that we're taking forward at the moment to enable us to then uh, work with the house builders on coming onto those parcels. 
and that's really the rhythm of the way that we like to work with this is getting all of the remediation work done um, ahead of ourselves um, so that then house builders can come on to a, a clean area of land but also their construction um, does not impact too much we hope on residents moving in. So if we go into some of the detail now about the buildings that you uh, might well see coming out of the ground, uh, we've obviously got the County Council headquarters building, um, which is just behind the watchtower, um, and that's moving uh, forward. Um, clearly, I, they are uh, stopping work at the moment as well, um, and we don't know how that will affect the ultimate schedule. That building was due to be completed uh, at the start of 2021, um, so we can keep you updated on how that then works out. Moving on to the Glade, which is the area behind the County Council building and behind the watch office. This is a really nice uh, green space that will be coming forward with a little bit of undulation and, and hills and, and trees uh, to create a bit of a bowl in the middle, which hopefully will be a nice space for families to hang out uh, and also to, to, for us to put on um, some of the outdoor cinema events uh, and pop up events that um, we know there's a lot of a lot of interest in. So that will move forward um, alongside the County Council build out uh, and the aim is that both of those aspects are completed um, and in place at broadly the same time, which as I say, is currently scheduled for uh, the beginning of 2021. Crossing the road from the Glade back over to the cricket pitch, um, we've then got the land set aside for the pavilion building, which is the main community building for the first phase. Uh, and will also act as a pavilion for cricket matches going forward. That uh, building will also have function room and kitchen uh, and the option of actually having some early health um, provision on site um, in the physio rooms that are there. It will also be the office for, uh, for Natalie going forward. Uh, so we're just in the final phases of getting planning permission for that building. It's been a bit uh, longer than we hoped in planning. Um, but we're working with contractors at the moment to start on site as soon as possible. Um, and we are hoping, uh, depending on when we can start on site, that we would look for a completion for that building by the end of the year and certainly in time for the next cricket season. We've had um, quite a few questions and discussions with some residents about Linear Park, but also some ideas and suggestions for things that could come forward in the green spaces. Um, so we've actually produced a little uh, a diagram, which the link is here, but we can also send that out and, and post it on Facebook um, to a more detailed diagram that shows both the bit that's under work at the moment, which will be completed in the summer, uh, just north of the play park by the school, um, and also a second and, and third phase for Linear Park, um, which will open up what was an old taxiway um, that led off to the main runway uh, and opened it up as a really nice green space um, for, for residents and a safe uh, scoot and walk to school route as well for, uh, for children. Um, phase two, as marked there, is, is designed up with some nice community orchards um, and, uh, and various features in it. Um, phase three, actually, we've got a broad design, but we'll be looking forward to doing a bit more engagement and consultation um, with residents as to other aspects that might want to see come forward. Um, so we'll keep you posted on Linear Park as that, uh, as that develops. I know in the last forum we had quite a lot of discussion um, uh, about the convenience store that's coming forward. Um, so we've been working closely with the uh, preferred provider co-op um, and we're pretty much ready uh, to put a planning application in for that store now. Um, that will crack on uh, regardless of the current situation. Clearly we don't quite know uh, how that will then lead in build time, um, but we will make sure that planning application goes in and progresses. Um, and we're also doing a little bit of work with Swinford Stores to make sure that some additional investment goes into that. We, we do see um, space for both stores to um, flourish within the phase one, uh, and with also the, perfect, the passing trade um, that we get at Orkenbury World. Um, so we're very keen that everyone continues to support the Swinford stores. The hub around co-op will also be space for uh, our first standalone nursery. Uh, and we have a, a provider, a, a preferred provider for that um, 
who we are just working with at the moment for the detailed design of that. Obviously, nursery is very important to get the design right. Um, so that will probably follow a little bit after the uh, co-op application going in. Um, and the area in that uh, hub will also include our first cycle hub. We've got a number of locations where people will be able to use and hire bikes, um, whether they're using them for their part of their commute to the business space on, on site uh, or for leisure. Uh, so we've got three hubs coming forward within phase one, and this will be the first one, which will all hopefully be delivered together uh, at some point during the summer uh, of next year. Now, one thing that we did want to go through uh, in, in a bit of detail, even though uh, the current situation means we don't quite know when works will be carried out, um, but many of you will remember that we've put in an application for the extension of Key Phase 1, which will bring forward the secondary school, uh, some additional homes, and also the start of the parkland that will be uh, the future area of the existing runway. Um, we've also got an application in for infrastructure to go in as uh, soon as possible to start um, moving that area forward uh, and getting that all ready um, for, for the school and, and the other homes. Um, before we do that, we've got a little bit of demolition that we need to get through. Um, so that was scheduled to start uh, mid-April. We think that might be delayed given everything that's going on, although a lot of the work to be carried out is actually uh, one or two people uh, working away at some distance from each other. Um, so there certainly are ways of doing it within social distancing guidance, but we're just working with the contractor to understand how best to do that. Um, so the demolition work in total is really looking at about 20 buildings, most of which are sort of either hangars or storage or office buildings uh, that were used um, by the military. Um, there's a few substations as well and infrastructure that's a bit more technical to, to remove and there's also a fair amount of hard standing which needs to be taken up to, to then enable uh, the landscaping work to happen. Uh, we're doing this in our the way we've always done, uh, removing aspects of the brownfield site, so very much a recycle uh, uh, first approach. We aim to recycle at least 98%. Uh, and most of what comes up will be uh, stored and used on site, certainly all of the crush from the hard standing. Uh, and then we obviously recycle metal and bricks and everything else that, that, that comes through as far as we can. Uh, so that partly means that we don't have things going to landfill. Uh, we save a lot of uh, HCV trips on the road. And it's just the right thing to do to have a sustainable development here. Uh, all access for that work will be from the construction HCV entrance, so it should not have uh, a, a, an impact on uh, people living on site. But obviously you can report any issues that happen um, through, uh, through to Natalie. The working hours for this work uh, would traditionally be 7.30 to, to 6pm uh, on Monday to Friday and 7.30 to 1 on Saturdays, which is our standard working hours. Um, we'll be working closely with the contractor to make sure that actually nothing noisy happens before 8.30 or after 5 o'clock. Um, and also we are very mindful that if people are at home over the next few months, um, that any noisy work might have more of an impact. So that is part of our consideration in working out how we do this with the contractor. Most of the noise will not really come from buildings coming down or the substations. That generally is fairly... Uh, quiet. It's not, uh, there's no explosives, there's no uh, big uh, knocking down. It's quite gentle, careful work to remove things carefully. Um, it tends to be the removing of the hard standing, which can be uh, noisier. Um, and normally we do in particular uh, bursts of it so that it's not, it's not too bad. Um, there is a flyer with more information for those who live closest to this area, which is mostly sort of north, north Red Row um, area. So we will be uh, just updating that when we know a little bit more about uh, about the timing of the works and then we'll do a door drop to residents. But if you wanted to have a look at that, at the moment we've put a copy of the current uh, version in the library uh, and we'll paste that um, link into Facebook as well. 
So one of the other uh, questions that we've had uh, a fair amount of interest in is about the country park being delivered, uh, which links to the wider strategic planning applications that we put in last year. Um, at the moment, most of the work to the south of the site, the planning discussions, um, are slightly paused because there is a big um, study going on about the future of the A141, which is that ring road around Huntingdon. Um, and there's a feasibility study going on about uh, widening it or uh, putting a new road in um, which might affect the southern uh, tip of the site. So at the moment um, we're not able to progress that planning application. It is in, it's with the District Council but they're not doing anything uh, active on it at the moment. Um, but in the meantime we're continuing to develop the detailed plans of the country park and also talking to some of the existing um, local partners who manage and deliver uh, similar green spaces to make sure that we're in a really good position to deliver it uh, as soon as planning can move forward. So we will keep residents posted and probably towards the end of next year, uh, sorry, the end of this year or early next year, uh, we may well do a few sessions around the things that people want to see coming forward in that space. Now linked to the A141, I'm trying to do some sort of order here, um, make sure it sort of makes sense. Uh, link to that, uh, the southern access and, and the A141, that southern bit of the site. Um, we want to talk a little bit about transport update. We always get various amounts of questions as to what's happening uh, about some of the strategic transport upgrades. Um, one thing we're very keen to make sure residents are aware of, there is a consultation going on at the moment about the Cambridge Autonomous Metro. Um, it is widely seen as a priority amongst all the partners the County Council, the Combined Authority and the District Council, that our Cumbria World is one of the uh, priority uh, stops for delivery uh, for the metro system. Um, we originally had plans for the guided bus way to come up into the site, so whether it's the guided bus or the cam, we are um, full steam ahead progressing those plans to connect into the southern side of the site and to have a, a, a route through the middle of the site as well linked into the way that the strategic transport comes together. Uh, we continue to progress discussions with Network Rail and the Department for Transport about the railway station at Auckland Weald. Uh, it's very much still on everyone's agenda and with the announcements on High Speed 2, um, there is now uh, you know, the ability to, to really progress with uh, with that railway station. So we will keep you posted on the timings for that, um, but that is very much part of delivering the transport infrastructure coming forward for our Cumbria world. And whilst I mentioned the A141 um, study, uh, our initial access into the south of the site, which we call the Southern Gateway, uh, is not dependent on that study. So we are um, very close to getting uh, agreement on the technical solution that the junction layout for putting that connection into the south of the site and that will mean there's a more direct route for people coming out of their homes uh, to go uh, through the centre of the site and down Grange Farm to get to the A141 um, and so we will be hopefully getting that through planning in the next few weeks um, and uh, then bringing that forward to enable a road, bus and cycle connection directly out onto the A141. The map there, by the way, is the, uh, is the CAM map that is for consultation. So I very much urge you to go, if you have the chance, uh, to look at the public consultation documents that have put up um, and to have your say. Uh, I think it's open for another couple of weeks, uh, so worth checking it out if you have a moment over the weekend. Bringing it a bit closer to home on uh, on buses, um, until we have that southern access open, uh, one of the things we're looking very hard, working very hard to do, is up uh, upgrade the existing bus services. Um, so we do have a, a stop um, for the bus route B guided busway, um, but we'll be putting in two new stops over the next few weeks uh, and their location and the broad technical layout of those are all but agreed with the County Council so we'll be hoping to implement them uh, coronavirus uh, allowing over the next few weeks um, and that will include having a, a stop directly 
uh, outside Swinford Road um, and then having one on the boulevard. Um, there are another eight stops who, which will go in across phase one um, as all of the roads connect up, uh, but those are the first two that will uh, enable us to get the bus service going. And linked to that, we're talking to providers. Uh, so on to the next slide. Um, many of you will be familiar with um, the B route that uh, currently comes past the site uh, on an hourly service. Um, we will also, in the next few months, start up an Auckland World shuttle service, um, which will correct, uh, connect directly to the bus station and the rail station, uh, and will also allow into interconnection but for Akamri Western, Akamri Village and the Stukleys um, for those who are uh, accessing services and amenities, the shop, post office um, in those villages and also of course to enable our neighbours to come up to Akamri World. So the aim of the shuttle is that it uh, works effectively every hour but on the half hour from the bus route B so that there is a, a half hourly bus service to, uh, to the development uh, and they will start earlier as well than uh, the B so that people getting an early train uh, are able to get to the station um, and they will also, we're working with them on developing a Sunday service. The timetables are still being finalised uh, and for those of you who completed the, the bus survey that um, Polly and Natalie promoted on, on Facebook, um, that's been really helpful. So we're, we're working through that to try and make sure that the timetable uh, meets meets people's needs and we are also able to keep developing it um it's it's a service that we're essentially paying um for a provider to deliver so we will be able to keep it under review and any of the travel surveys that we do in future uh will directly help us to get uh, the services that that people want and we need them to be good uh, buses full of people uh so we're very keen to make sure we get those timings right so we're just working through it at the moment. It is quite complicated to set up a new bus service. It's got to be officially registered. Um, and we're uh, working really closely with Jews coaches who will deliver uh, that service for us, who are being amazingly uh, helpful uh, and positive about this. Uh, and we're very hopeful that we'll be able to launch that service in the summer. But we will update you on the exact timings. And we'll also be doing quite a lot of promotional elements around the services. Um, we know people are really keen to get more buses uh, to Alchemy World. We are incredibly keen to do that as well and make sure people have really good options other than their cars. Um, so please continue to work with us um, and we will we'll make sure we deliver those in the next couple of months. The Warbler was delivered to all residents on Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, it had with it um, some cards that you can put in your window to say if you're self-isolating to let delivery people know and also if you need assistance. Um, Any Butler has set up a Facebook page um, for anyone needing assistance. Um, people can register there to, as volunteers. I've also had a few people calling me directly um, who are not on the Facebook page and I will continue to work with them. All the play areas are now closed but the green spaces are still available to you. Please respect social distancing. I've also been working on a community fund. This would be um, a fund for residents to set up groups within the, within the Weald. It will be a £250 grant to set up groups to do uh, maybe a netball group or a badminton group. Um, I'm still working on the details so I'm not quite ready to um, release it yet. By the time this is all over, it will be well and truly underway. To enable Swinford and Abbott's Ripton stores to support as many people and communities, they have decided to close Swinford stores from tomorrow, Saturday the 28th of March at 12.30. That's the slightly bad news. The good news is they're starting a delivery-only service. To help facilitate this, they have a brand new website, swinford.store. If you just enter that in the search bar, it'll come up. This has been built by William Dorrington from The Weald at very short notice, while he's working very long hours on behalf of the county as a whole. Thank you, William, does not even come close to their appreciation. You can order through the website by telephone on 01480 272421 or through the Facebook page. They will have a one day a week for each of the eight communities they are supporting. 
They know there are only seven days in a week and they're working on that. Eleanor, their daughter, is now entering stock to fully complete the website and this is a mammoth task and will take a few weeks to fully complete. They have over 3,500 lines at present and stock is continually changing and expanding so please bear with them as the website gets better and better. In the short term, please use the order form highlighted on the front page rather than the shopping basket. George, their son, will be carrying out 99% of the delivery, so please keep him busy. Debbie, one of their members of staff, will be kept busy with Abbott's Ripton and helping collate orders from the communities they are supporting. Sam will be running Abbott's Ripton post office, which is covering Sawtree, as theirs is closed due to the lady being pregnant. Sam will also be dealing with the logistics of suppliers, as we're having to use new ones um, that have partly closed and the shop. Adrian will be visiting the wholesalers on a daily basis to ensure fre fresh produce requested, dependent on wholesalers' stock availability, making sure it's as fresh as possible. Bread, bread and milk will be in fresh on the day of your de delivery. Not forgetting the children, make sure you've got enough bribes, sorry, sweets, to last a week. Beer, wine and soft drinks will also be available. Anything they can't do or have to offer an alternative for will be confirmed at the time they ring you on the day of your delivery to take payment over the phone. Some items may be restricted on quantities depending on availability. Later tonight, the list of which day of the week each community has been allocated will be on the Facebook page, on the new website, or in any other way they can. Becca and I will be on the Facebook page for the next hour to take any questions. We'll try and answer as many as we can on the spot. I'll also do a Q&A that I'll release as usual um, to cover any issues that we can't answer there and then.